Visual Studio Code is the most popular text editor, and in this video, I'll be sharing shortcuts and extensions to help you maximize your coding productivity while using it. Before we get into the extensions, there is a reason why VS Code is the most popular text editor. Without the extensions, it's packed with some very cool features and shortcuts that a lot of developers don't know about. Let's go over them. The key to being efficient as a programmer when coding is to limit taking your hands away from the keyboard. Most of the actions that require you to use a mouse can be done from the keyboard using shortcuts built into VS Code. One of the most popular ones is opening files. So I currently have a React project here that has a lot of files and a lot of folders. Most of the time, when people want to open files, we usually use the mouse and navigate over here and click on the file that we want to open. There's an easier way. Typing command P opens the search menu. You can then search for a file you want. So say I want to open the package.json, I can just search package.json and it opens it and then I press enter and the file is automatically opened. The next shortcut has to do with creating new files. Usually, to create a new file, you can use the shortcut command N. What this will do is open a file here. You don't have to press command S to save it and pick where to save it and all of that. That takes a little bit of time to do. What we can do is type command shift P. This will open the command window. From the command window, we search for a keyboard shortcuts JSON and open it. In the keyboard shortcuts JSON, we add the following entry. Key cmd plus n and command explorer.new file and press enter. When we save this, the next time we try to create a new file and we use command n, what happens is it creates a new file on the left here in the folder that we're on. We can then give our file the name, say test.json and everything is here, as opposed to creating a file and then picking where to save it. Speaking of files, the next command has to do with navigating between the text editor on the right and the file explorer on the left. What most people do is to go to the left and then, you know, use your mouse and scroll. What we can do instead is if we type command or control zero, the focus is then on the file explorer. We can even use the arrow keys to go up and down and select the file that we want. If we come across a folder, we can use spacebar to open the folder. And when we know the folder we want to open, we press spacebar and the folder is opened. Now, if the focus is on the file explorer, if we want to get the focus back on the text editor, rather than using a mouse, we can just type command one and the focus is back in the text editor. And if we want it back on the explorer, command zero takes us right there. The next step has to do with multi-line editing. I'm currently in this HTML file. Let's say I want to duplicate this paragraph tag over and over again. What most people would do is what I did earlier there, right? I copied the whole line and I pressed enter and then I keep duplicating. There is a way, way, way easier way to do this. If we put the cursor at the end of the line and press shift option down, it basically duplicates that line below. And we can keep doing it for as many times as we want. If we want to copy the line to the space above us, all we do is do the same thing, shift option, and then the up arrow key. And it pretty much just duplicates the line above. Now, let's say for some reason, we want to change the class names on all of these, right? We can either highlight the name, change it to the new name, and then go down here, copy this, and then keep replacing it. What we can do is put the cursor at the end of the line and hit option, command, and down arrow, and it'll pretty much duplicate the cursor to those multiple lines. We can then make our changes here and do new class name and press escape, and that's done that way. Now, let's say the changes that I wanna make are not all on the same row. What I can do is hold option or alt and click. This will add a cursor wherever I click. So if I click here, it adds a cursor here. If I click here, it adds a cursor here. I can then make multi-line edits to all those places at the same time. So I can do making a change and then press escape and then that's done. This comes in handy when you're working on HTML files where you may wanna change the class name but not in all the tags. The next example has to do with highlighting specific occurrences of a variable. Let's say I wanted to change the suggestions variable to a new name. What I can do is put my cursor on the variable and type command D. What this does is it selects that occurrence of the word. And if I type it again, it selects the next occurrence and it selects the next occurrence. It's very similar to what I did earlier with the holding alt or option and clicking. Except what this does is it finds the specific word and adds it to a selection as, as you can see here. Say I wanna change the variable from suggestions to a new variable. I can then press backspace, it takes it off. I can then say new variable, new variable, variable, and boom. I've now changed all the occurrence of suggestions, except I selected the specific ones I want to change. Now, let's say we want to do it for a variable, but rather than just selecting the occurrences, we want to 
change all the variables. If we put our cursor on the word and type command E, it'll select all occurrences of that variable. We can then come in here and replace the name with whatever we want. The last inbuilt VS Code tip is basically deleting a whole line. This is a very simple one. Usually when you want to delete a whole line, you usually click backspace or you hold backspace all the way till it deletes the whole word. Some people would also highlight the whole line and then delete it. There's a way easier way. If you hold command and delete, it deletes that whole line. If you're on a Windows, it will be control and backspace to delete the whole line. Let's move over to some extensions. First on the list is Peacock. What Peacock basically does is say you have multiple windows or VS Code open. Peacock basically allows you to change the color of the window so you're not confused. So here I have a project called Candor Frontend. If I open another instance of VS Code for Candor Backend, because I have a frontend and a backend, after installing it, what I can do is if I open the command palette using Command Shift P and type Peacock, I can select from the options that are here. Let's pick Surprise Me with a random color. What you can see it is it has changed the outside of this VS Code window to be different from this one. Similarly, if I'm here on a new window, I can type Command Shift P and type Peacock and click Surprise Me with a random color and it has surprised me with a different color. One thing that's pretty cool with it is you can pick what specific color you want. You can ask it to darken the color, you can ask it to lighten the color, and if you want the regular VS Code color back, you can click Reset Color Workspace. This comes in handy because if you have several VS Code windows open, using Peacock will help you distinguish them by giving them a specific color. The next extension is called Live Server, and what it does is basically launches a development server with live reload feature right from your browser. So let's take a look at what it does. First thing we have to do is install it. After installing, I have a basic HTML file here. Usually what would happen is if I make a change here and in this HTML file, and I have the file here. I've saved the file, but I have to then reload this for the change to persist. If I then enable live server by either clicking go live here or right clicking and click open with live server, what happens is it, it then opens a live server directly from here. So if I make a change to the file here and I click save, I don't have to then come and reload it, right? It automatically reloads the file from here. The live server is also coming very handy when you're working with PHP files where they have to be served from a server. Usually I would use something like HTTP, but the fact that it's inbuilt directly from VS Code makes it very, very handy. The next extension is called Bracket Pair Colorizer. I've been using this for a while and it's great to see the extension is now inbuilt into VS Code. If we go to settings, it automatically takes us to where we can enable it. If we click enable, first let's click disable to see what it does. As you can see, the brackets here are just regular old brackets, right? If we go back to the settings and we click enable, what we can see is it gives them a specific color. So there is now purple and this is purple. This is blue, this is blue. Same thing with here. This is yellow, this is yellow. This kind of helps you see where the closing bracket is for an open bracket if they're the same color. What we can do is we can even go one step further and enable guide for bracket pair. If we change this to true and we go back here, we can see that once we click on a bracket, it automatically highlights the left here and shows us the entire content of the bracket, right? This is pretty cool because the moment we click here, we can automatically see that everything enclosed in this bracket is in here. It does it for the whole file as well. So if I click here, we can see that everything here is within here. The next extension is called tab out and it basically tabs you out of quotes and brackets. It, it may not seem like a lot, but let's take a look at it. First thing we have to do is install it. It's been installed, all right, great. By default, if we open a pair of quotes, say I wanna add a new variable to my state class and I say it's a new variable and I open curly brackets, the only way to step out of the curly brackets usually is to click the next arrow key and then down. What tab out basically does is, rather than clicking the arrow key, if you press tab, it basically tabs you out of the, the curly brackets. The exact same thing with quotes. Say I do var and I do quotes. Rather than bringing this hand here to tap this, I can simply press tab and I'll tab out of it. You can enable it or disable it by hitting command shift P and then searching tab out. Try it out. It may seem weird, but I promise you once you try it out, you it saves you a lot of time because once you open 
coats or curly brackets rather than using the arrow keys you can simply use your hand here and hit tab and be out of the curly brackets or the quotation mark the next extension is called to do highlights and it does exactly what it says it highlights your to do let's take a look at it first thing we do is install it let's say i'm in my email verification class and in my response from google i say hey i want to remember to do something here maybe um a typical one people usually do is let's say this was not here right um say this was not here there's no error handling what people would do is they will write to do um, and then handle error what to do highlight does is it basically highlights the to do so if i'm scrolling through this file this pops out for me to do, basically handle it what's pretty cool is you can adjust the settings for the specific file that you want it to highlight so say you don't want it to highlight in javascript files you can go into the configuration and remove the JS files from, um, from the configuration. So it won't scan and highlight to do's for JavaScript files. The next extension is called CSS Peek. It allows you to peek into a CSS class from the file that you're in without necessarily opening the CSS file. Let's take a look at an example. I'm currently in this email verification file and we have this span that has a CSS class named error. Let's say I wanted to modify this error um, CSS class. What I would do is, scroll up, try to figure out the CSS class and open the CSS file and edit it. With CSS Peek, it becomes way easier. If I hold command and click on the error, it basically shows me the exact error CSS class here. I can then make changes from here. Say I wanted to make this 90%. I can make the change from here and save it. If there's multiple occurrences of error in multiple CSS files, it also shows me here on the left and it also shows me where the file is. It comes in really handy when you're working on HTML files and you want to see the CSS properties and make changes to it without opening the file. Be sure to turn on settings sync. Doing this will back up all your settings and extensions to the cloud. So if you ever download VS Code on a new machine at work or a new laptop, you have access to all your extensions, mappings and themes. To turn it on, you open the command search by typing command shift P and type setting sync and then click turn on from there. It'll ask you to log in and do a few things. After that, you'll be good. Those are all the extensions and shortcuts I have for you. Let me know your favorite ones down in the comments and also let me know if there's any I skipped in this video that you'd like to see added in a future video. If you like videos like this, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I make shorter form contents like this every week. As always, thanks for coding with me and catch you on the next one. Peace.